Calvary's pulpit ministry and the teachings of Pastor Lumide Emmanuel. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do and along with your wisdom develop common sense and good judgment. Get ready for an impartation of wisdom as you listen to the Apostle of Wisdom. Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 to 3 and then we read chapter 3. If you are there, can I hear a big amen? amen? Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa. And he found the ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Chapter 3 from verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto, the, unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed the fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from his violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from this fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their work, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Father, we thank you because you are God, and beside you there is no other God. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not a joy of your word will go unfulfilled. Lord, this morning we are gathered to hear your word. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our situation. Speak to our circumstances. Let your word find a dwelling place in us. And let your word do a work in us that will be eternal. Thank you, awesome God, because no one will live here the same. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And I hear a big, big, big amen. amen. Now this morning, I want to share with you very briefly on the souls in your seed. The souls in your seed. The souls in your seed. People of God, one of the things that we need to have as believers is to have what I call a big picture thinking. To have the ability to see beyond the now, to have the ability to see beyond the immediate, to have the ability to see the implication and the uh, impact of whatever we get ourselves involved in. As a church and as believers, we are all used to what is known as a generational blessing. And we are also used to what is known as a generational curse. Now, whenever you talk about a generational curse, what you are saying is that people that are alive today are going to face something negative as a result of something that people that came before them did. Now, when you talk about generational curse, we are so used to that because we know that what we do today can affect our children tomorrow. But that's the same thing with generational blessing. 
Many of us are not born in a Christian home. Many of us were not born into a family where prayers have gone on for generations. So we are more like the first set of believers that our generation has ever seen. And we are the patriarchs of our generation. It is now left to us to lay a foundation, to clear the bad ones, and to lay a solid foundation so that generations after us will be blessed because we came into existence. So you need to understand as a believer that whatever you do, there are implications for what you do. So in this period of sowing our seeds, in this period of giving to God, I've been inspired of the Lord to let us know that for every seed you sow, there are souls that are connected. So that you will understand that giving to God, giving your time, giving your talents, giving your treasure is beyond just building a building. Every time you give, there are souls in your seed. When you sow seeds, there are souls that will be saved, there are souls that will be transformed, there are souls that will be delivered because you gave. There's a song that, that was written years ago, and it's a song that helps us to also understand that the fact that there are souls in our seed. He said, thank you for giving to the Lord. I am alive, that was saved. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you gave. And in, in, in the, in the uh, stanzas, it says, um, uh, I don't know, what, what did I give? How come? He said, no, no, no. He said, many years ago, I was in Sunday school. You were a missionary came, and that day the missionary came, he preached, and I got born again. So now the missionary that comes to speak, now I'm speaking to you, hundreds, thousands are listening to me, but I don't know you. All of you know me, but me, I don't know you. Do you understand now? So now, but what I'm doing now, years later, many people will refer back, ah, when I was in Calvary, when I was in this. Now, so you need to understand that every time you do something, there are people that will either be blessed or be caught by what you do. So there are souls in your seed. So the question is, do you want the souls to be blessed or do you want the souls to be caught? Now, we look at the story of Jonah. Now, Jonah was called of God, and when God called Jonah, God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and go and preach to them. Now, God knew that Nineveh was in trouble. God knew that Nineveh needed salvation, but God cannot come down to preach. So, all God was saying is, I need a vessel that will offer himself or herself so that I can use them to produce the testimony. And when God called Jonah, Jonah refused to go. And you know the story of Jonah. He refused to go. Instead of that, he carried his money. The money he should have used to transport himself to Nineveh, he carried the money to transport himself away from Nineveh. God didn't give him transport here. He carried his own money to transport himself. Instead of using that money to transport himself and use the money to save souls, he used the same money. Because let me tell you something, whether you give or you don't give, you will spend the money. Everybody pays tithes. You either pay tithes to church or you pay to the devil. Mechanic will collect. Something will happen here to collect. This one will happen there to collect. Everybody pays tithes. Everybody pays tithes. Everybody pays tithes. So whether you give for the building fund or you don't give, you still spend the money. So question, are you spending it for taxes or you are spending it for Nineveh? So Jonah went and you know the story. He swallowed him. Story, 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 story. At the end of the day, he repented in chapter 2. Say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm going to pay my vows. And then the Bible says, and the Lord made the fish to vomit it. But guess what? Where I'm going to is on the other side. By the time this guy entered the city, and he began to preach, the Bible says, the whole city, the king died for the you know, hey, for today, we cannot be destroyed. The king rose up, they declared the national fasting. Everybody was taught to fast. Human beings were fasting, animals were fasting, everything, no drinking, no food. God help us. Have mercy. Can you imagine the millions of people that would have been lost if you didn't repent? Talk to us in neighbor. There are souls on the other side of your obedience. There are souls on the other side of your obedience. Now, how many of you believe that if Calvary Bible Church has 
more space, people will come. I'm not going to believe that. Are you sure? If we have three times this size, we can fill it up. You believe that? So that means we are the ones stopping them from coming. Because we don't have the space. Now, we have an overflow. But people were going to the overflow, and because of money, there was a problem. Electrical will not work, oh, we need to buy this television, we need to buy this cable, okay, put it in the recreation list uh, where we are trusting God, money is coming, money is coming, some people left. Have you forgotten there was a time we had one tent here? The place was already filled up. But, <laughs> so you need to understand that every time, souls, there are people that are waiting, like me, living, is because there is no space. If we build this place and double this place within six months, we can fill it up. Because there are people waiting. Nineveh was waiting. But thank God that he repented. So I said, neighbor, there are souls on the other side of your seat. Now listen to me when I talk about souls in your seat. It's not only about money. It can be your time. It can be your time. There are souls. Many of you need to give your time to soul winning. Many of you need to give your time to intercession. To intercession. Every Sunday there is church seats. There are people whose life are supposed to be. We hear testimony of church here over and over again. Some people have never been taught money you are not giving time, you will still not give. At least if you are not empowered yet to be able to give some kind of money you desire to give, let God see the willingness in your heart by the time that you give. There are souls on the other side of your seat. A pastor had a very mighty church, thousands of people. And one year, he just realized that the church began to do You know how that you'll be checking yourself and be repenting of sins that you have not committed. The guy began to repent. I said, I didn't do anything wrong. They all the pastors were calling and said, Did you do anything wrong? Did you know why is the church going down? Why are people leaving? And they, they couldn't explain it. They could not. They repented of their repentances. They repented of un- uncommitted sins. Nothing was happening. And then he said, Look, God, I'm tired. And he took three days off. So he's going for a retreat. He mo- God must answer me. And as he began to pray on the first day, immediately after the first night, he slept and he saw a vision. In the vision, they got to the gate of heaven. And people were queuing to enter heaven. And as they were coming to enter heaven, there was a, an elderly woman in the church that was in front of the pastor. So the pastor said, ah, I know that woman. That's a member of my church. The pastor was waiting just to see, okay, when I get to heaven, we'll be talking on the other side. So the woman got to the gate of heaven. And the very minute the woman got there, everybody just stood at attention. And they began to salute, they began to sing, they began to worship, they began to thank God for the woman. And then they give her a crown, they put robes on her body, they put rings on her hand, and they, everybody stood and they celebrated her and ushered her into heaven. And the pastor said, oh, wow, if they can do this to my church member, by the time I get there, God himself will have to come and welcome me. So the woman went in, but when it was the pastor's turn, they just say, oh, you are welcome. So they just gave him a, a chain. And they say, you can go. He said, story, sir. Hold on, please, story. That woman, she's a member of my church. They say, yeah, yeah, so what? So that's not, there's no church here. Everybody's one church. So can you move on to the next slide? He said, no, I want to understand. Why would you give a member of my church? I pastor thousands of people. And she's just a man. She's not even a minister. She's not even heading any department. How would you give a member? All that on Ami, the GO. You are not just giving me a ring. Uh, a necklace. And then he woke up. And he, was, he began to think, and God said, that woman is the secret of your ministry. And she died seven months ago. You didn't even know she's dead. She died seven months ago, and nobody celebrated that in church because she's not anything to you people. But that woman spends five hours every day praying for you and your ministry for the past ten years. Five hours every day for the past ten years. When she died, the prayer covering was removed. Because nobody has been able to replace that space that our vacuum has created. So, to so go back, raise intercessors, to be praying five hours every day to cover the gap, and everything will come back to normal. When the pastor woke up, he has gotten the answer he needed. Now, that woman was not a pastor, she was not an evangelist, but there were souls on the other side of her seat. The Bible, the Bible talks about the woman called Anna. She was a widow. 
And then the Bible says she was in the temple praying night and day. If you say you don't have money, you are an elder, you are a tailored generation, you don't have money, you can't pray. Where are the praying mothers? Where are the praying fathers? You can't even give your time to just continue to pray and be counseling people and be impacting the next generation. So it's not only about money. There are souls on the other side of your seat. It may be your time. Number two, it may be your talent. There are things that the church is spending money on. If you have the expertise and you have the skill to be able to make it happen, why not do it so that we will not spend that money for that thing? So the money we are supposed to spend for it, we will not use it to do other things. There are people in church to be minister to. There are welfare to be done. There are a lot of things to be done. But where is your talent? Hello? Imagine if everybody is collecting salary for what they are doing here. Well, we we ever we do we blame Nigeria that we only have recorded expenditure. We do have capital expenditure. Do you know that's the same situation with many people's life and many people's home and many businesses and many ministries? If we spend all the money on recorded expenditure, us I want to collect salary, greet I want to collect salary, choir I want to collect salary, technique I want to collect salary, there will be trouble. You are a teacher. You know what it means to take care of children, and the children church is looking for teacher forever. What will it take for you to say, look, I've got experience with kids, I've got three children, I've been able to raise three children, let me go to children's church and go and help them. Listen to me. If you go to the children's church and we have enough teachers, we can divide you into four and you only be there once in a month. But if you don't have enough teachers, only one group of teachers will be there every Sunday and they won't be able to come to the main church. But if we have enough teachers, you can go once in a month, give your time, say, teacher, please, I want to be part of the teacher once every month. I will come. Many of you parents, many of you young couple, these are the things you should be doing. There are souls on the other side. Do you know how many children can be saved? Three. And do you think because they are children of Christian parents, they are born again? Ah, I sorry for you. In our teenage church now, in June, I'm going to announce a major program we are doing. In June, we are doing a major meeting, bringing a guest to church. Already, we are dealing with homosexuality and lesbianism in our teenage church. Hello? Many pregnancy, we have done maybe two pregnancies to the teenage church. Oh, man, don't see teenage church, oh. Don't fool yourself, oh. Don't think because you are Christian, you're no, 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 no. Many of you don't even know your children. You don't know your children, you just call your fooling yourself. You don't know nada. Eh, I don't want my daughter to play with any man. Okay, other girls are coming to sleep with your daughter in your house. I don't want my son to play with all these girls, boys to boys. So things are happening. So you have experience. Give your time. Give your talents. Join the children's church. Because listen to me, you bring your children to church two hours every Sunday, but they are in the school Monday to Friday. Many secondary school and primary school in Lagos now be filled with immorality. Many schools in Lagos, almost exactly in primary school, second school in Lagos. All those private schools you are carrying your children to, including Christian schools. That somebody going to a Christian university does not mean they are protected. A Christian university on Valentine's Day, by the time they woke up the next day, the field was filled with over 100 condoms that they picked in a Christian university. Over 100 condoms, not the football field, not the parish. In a Christian school. So let's stop joking around. Don't bring your children to church for two hours and I say, and I take them to church of God. Why would my children be like, do you do prayer in your house in the morning? Do you teach them Bible? And you expect two hours in church to settle the 39 hours or 57 or 200 hours of YouTube and Facebook and all the things that has bombarded their life and you are giving blackberry to your children. We are going to do this issue I think it's June 1st. We will come. At what age you give your children blood? Because many of you, you are the one that use money to buy devil for your children. Give them blood, but you think you are so sophisticated. You, you see, the uselessness of this generation is that the money we think we have is ruining our morals, ruining our values. Let them enjoy you. I don't want my children to suffer. May you not suffer in old days. When you are going from the rehabilitation center to the rehabilitation center looking for your children that are on drugs. So give your time, give your talent. It's not only about money, there are souls on the other side. You can't be begging people to come to children's church to come and teach. You are married, you don't have a child. It is an error for you to be married, believing God for a child, and you are not connected to children's church. I'm telling you, you should be connected either by your time, by your time, or every month you should be sowing like 10,000 to children's church. You sow it to children to get children. 
I'm telling you, you should know that you are believing God for a child, and then you come to go to children's church. Be seen to them every day. Let them be and see how are you. Let them be prophesying. Children are powerful. Let them be prophesying to you. If everybody believing God for a child, this one Sunday in a month, we will not have children's church teacher problem. So you want us to have children's church teacher again and be paying you salary to be in children's What is our problem? How come we will come to God to be empowered so that we can go out there and prosper? Why do we want to come to God and collect the money? So be a Christian. Your time, your talent, your treasure, use it. Because many times, let me tell you something, in the, in the bit of things you are undoing people, you are undoing yourself. Because let me tell you something, Christianity is not these four walls of the church. Oh. Anybody can come here and wear suit and tie and pose in church and say, uh, it's a belong to you. Oh, you can all worship and kneel down. Not down under the moon. We don't participate 23 years in the kingdom. We are not children here. What we prove that you are a Christian is how you live outside there. Hello? A woman, a nurse, she was the matron of an hospital. And she's very, very good at her job. On the 31st of December, she was rushing to go to church. She has called her husband. The husband said, okay, no problem. When you finish, I'll, I'm going. I'm on my way home myself so that I will go. But if you don't meet me, carry the children and go. If I get that boy, I'll carry the children and I will go. So she was rushing church, church, church. I want to go and cross over with God. And as she was going, somebody, there was a gasping motor accident not too far from the hospital. And they brought the people to the hospital. The man was almost dead. Some were already dead. Some were shouting. And they went to her, Metron, Metron, come. You can't close up. There are some new people that have come. If I want man, people can attend to him now. He will not have said, no, 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 no. No, no, let's come I'm going to church. Ah, nothing can stop me from going to church. Which church are you going to? Where human beings are dying? What kind of useless Christianity is this one? Is it that crossover service you will go to that will change all your life? Guess what? She refused. Left the man there. Nobody could do anything. Nobody, no senior mentor, no senior doctor, nothing. And she went to church. Got home. They said the father is not there. Took the children and went to church. They didn't see the husband in crossover. It was when they finished on the other side of crossover, she looked at her phone. They had been calling, calling, calling. The husband was the man they brought. The whole city, they didn't even go and look to say, let me see and check post and hand over to him. He was like, yeah, the husband made the accident to happen around that place, not God, but you understand. So that they will to go to bed, they move out in the man to the hospital where the wife is. God was already walking behind the scene. She abandoned the other. Now, listen to me. If she knew it was the husband, would she have gone to church? That's what Christianity is. If it is now selfishness, you will know how to give. Don't you build your own house? The toilet of Calvary, is that the way the toilet of your house is? Hello? The road to cover is that way? Many times we are so selfish that we don't see how something affects us. And then we refuse to do things, and the enemy capitalizes on that, and then it gets us. But I pray in the name that is above every name that this year the seeds you have sown will make a way for you. Every seed you are going to sow will make a way for you. That every week of this year, you will be having testimonies traceable to your skin. Testimonies traceable to your time. Testimonies traceable to your time. Testimonies traceable to your children. In the kingdom of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Bow down your heads, everybody. Lord, I repent. Lord, I'm sorry. In every way I have withheld my seed. Lord, I'm sorry. Open your mouth and begin to pray. You are a technical person. You go to the church website, it's not working well. Why can't you come and work for the website? And do it free as part of your service. You want to charge church for website, you want to charge church for electrical, you want to charge church for everything. Open your mouth and say, Lord, in every way, the experience I have. The kingdom is about what are you doing out there? Many of you have experiences in your career. You are top people, management people, people in, the, in, in your career. You cannot use your career to bless the kingdom. You are blaming central bank governor that he gave money to Muslims. What is wrong in that? Is it not corporate social responsibility? Where your treasure is there, you are have to be. Are Christians not been in the central bank governor before? Did they give church anything? Like proposal to a Christian, they will be telling you, yeah, you know, we can't give, you know, Muslims will complain. But when it's Muslim, they don't consider you. What are you born again and you are there and you can't understand the kingdom? What is wrong? We carry the money and do corporate social responsibility for the kingdom. Go 
Not only this town. Guinness, start the whole road. Nestle, start the whole road. Companies are starting road for church. But when we get there, we don't want to do. We keep looking for one excuse there, you know, eh, policy, Muslim, we talk. Well, let them talk. Do the work of God. Use your talent. Use your talent. Use your treasure to build this kingdom. Only what you do for God will last. Lord, I'm sorry. Open your mouth and talk to God. Lord, I'm sorry. I want to use my position. I want to use my job. I want to use my career to build your kingdom. I'm sorry. In every way that I have not done what I'm supposed to do. In every way I have held back. In every way I have withdrawn from giving my heart. Lord, I'm sorry. There are souls on the other side. Souls on the other side. People just want to collect salary. Drummer want to collect salary. Uh, guitarist want to collect salary. Uh, how many salary will pay in one department? Get man wants to collect. You are cleaning toilets. You want to collect. Maintenance want to collect. Every water. How will we not have money to do the work of God? Lord, I'm sorry. Now put your mouth. I begin to pray. Lord, help me to sow my seed and save the souls. Help me to sow my seed and save the souls. Nineveh, my Nineveh must be saved. Every your mother pray. My Nineveh must be saved. My Nineveh must be saved. The Nineveh that is waiting for my seed. The Nineveh that is on the other side of my goodness. May I save my Nineveh. May I not turn my back on my Nineveh. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Shalimando kiara basate. Riba rogo brada shiga da hande. Ruge teke seko rabayane. Mira da brada wosande de brokosia da bayata. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Morika rabasande de brokosia da bayane. Munanda gaziga yande. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, my name will pray. Listen to me, we are going to pray one more prayer point, but let me take it from scripture so that you will see it. In Matthew 28, from verse 11. Matthew 28, from verse 11. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders, and are taking counsel. They gave large money unto the soldiers. Somebody say large money. They gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ear, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. When Jesus resurrected, and they can say, ah, the guy don't resurrect. They say, no, people must not believe that. Take money, go to radio. Take money, go to television. Take money, go to Facebook. Take money, put it everywhere. That his disciples came to steal him while we're sleeping. And if they ask us to investigate it, we will tell the king we have investigated. That is the truth. And the soldiers collected the money and they spread the rumor with money. Listen to me. The devil spares no cost at fighting the church. It is only church that is this one is too expensive. That one is too expensive. This one is too expensive. When the devil wants to spend money, have you ever seen any cigarette advert that is local? Or advert of all this beer or all this alcohol? When you see the advert, You'll be shaking like this. When you see the way the bubbles in the bottle, everything will be so clear. Perfect camera when church wants to do advance. It will look like a shine. Hello? How many church adverts have you seen on CNN? Do you know how much one minute on CNN is? Hello? Do you know one minute on CNN? Do you know how much is the going to investigate? Because if I tell you, you'll feel for that here. Lord, my resources will spread your kingdom. What do you want to pray in the name of Jesus? My money will not spread rumor. My money will not spread fashion. My money will not spread canality. My money will spread your kingdom. My resources will build your kingdom. My money will take your message to the television. 
We take your message to the streets. My resources will spread your kingdom. Open your mouth and pray. My resources will spread your kingdom. Lord, I offer myself. Everything I have belongs to you. My resources will spread your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. My resources will spread your kingdom. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, awesome God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Every head bowed and every eye closed. I want to pray for two set of people. Number one, if you are here today and you are not born again, you have not given your life to Jesus. If Jesus is to come now, you are not sure of him, but you say, Pastor, I want to surrender to Jesus. Pastor, please pray with me. I want Jesus to come and take over. I want to live for him. Wherever you are, can you lift up your hands? Let me pray with you. Give you praise, oh Lord. Thank you for spending time listening to this message. 1,000 good intentions are not as powerful as one action. As you put the principles and truths lent to work, your testimony will be next. For counseling, prayer request, testimony or more products, visit our website or contact us through all our contact channels printed on the sleeve. Jesus. We give you praise.